By this lab 07, we are going to complete task 6 and task 7. Please open uh, the official website on seed buffer, buffer flow attack the server uh, version. We are open the lab manual. For the lab set, set up, we are set up uh, last lab, right? So we will continue from our last lab, lab 06. Task 6 and task 7, that's what we are going to do uh, today. Uh, go to lab uh, 06. This lab 06, oh, what's this one? Uh, this is a 64-bit version, and we did it locally uh, last uh, Wednesday. How will you follow this lab 06? These are all the materials. In task uh, 6, we are going to experiment with address randomization. Here we enable this one. Enable the ASLR and send a hello message to the level 1 and level 3 server. Do it multiple times and in your report, report your observation. Here you only need to do a, a level 1, right? For level 3 and 4, they are 64 bit. We didn't do those uh, two tasks. So similarly, you are only required to do to this uh, level 1. So we need to uh, start up the servers. In this uh, lab setup, open a terminal. Uh, DC up. Uh, these are the servers, level 1, 2, 3, 4. Now open a new tab. Now send a uh, hello those servers. But before that, we are asked to uh, enable the address randomization. Actually, every time you reboot your computer, the setting will be restored, which means it's uh, enabled. So it's been this control. Just uh, check it so we don't need a W dash W. Well, you see, uh, it's two because I just start up my uh, my word box today. Now, how do we send uh, those uh, messages to the level one and uh, level three? A quick way, just check your history to find a uh, hello. Right here, you see uh, how do we send. Uh, hello to those servers. We only need to make sure you will send us to level 1 is this server 0 file. Uh, so 3 is 0 7. So we can uh, just copy and paste 0 file uh, this one. Paste here Enter. Now, how do we see it? We, we need a control C to stop it, right? as we did before. Then check this uh, tab. You see this uh, this one is server one, and you see the address of the buffer and the EBP. One one before one one four eight. Run several times, for example, uh, run three times. Control C, come back, check these addresses, they are different. And last time, Control C, you see uh, the addresses, they are randomized. 
Every time we get a different uh, address. Now, could we defeat this 32 bit uh, randomization? Here, uh, no matter 32 bit or 64 bit, they can be uh, defeated uh, using brute force. So, we have a script, the bash script used to uh, do it. Try it again and again. So, in this uh, task, we will give it a try on the 32 bit level 1 server with brute force approach. And we will use the payload from the level 1 attack. And you can use the following uh, shell script to run the random program in an infinite loop. If you get a reverse shell, the script will stop. So now let's try it. Run this one. So we open a new tab here again. Open a new tab. Go to the attack code. So we have a brute force .sh. Now please uh, double check. text editor check job those are the two files both force and the exploit one okay this is the brute force you see they use this uh, command line to send the bad file the payload to the server one as we did before but here is a while loop for those students who had taken my ideas uh, 372 should be very familiar with this uh, while loop while two is a infinite loop and I try to uh, increase this value uh, duration just zero seconds the value start from zero it will show the time. Okay, now let's uh, generate the bad file. One is exploit one dot pi. So just follow your uh, lab zero six. The bad file is generated. Now we can run this uh, brute force dot sh. It may take several minutes. It depends on your luck. Here, for example, uh, in that case, you have 10 minutes. If you are not so unlucky, you should be able to get a reverse shell within 10 minutes. Just keep it running. Okay, I'm not that luck. It's still running. Uh, just leave it here. Let's go to uh, task uh, 7. Task 7, we have two subtasks. First one, turn on stack code protection in the compiler. Second one, turn on the non executable stack protection provided by our CPU, but it's uh, manipulate into the compiler flag, the dash C. So now let's have a look how to do this, uh, these subtasks. Totally, we, we just have uh, two subtasks, right? Just two. Here is a guideline on reverse share. We refers, refer to that on our last lab. So in this one, go to server code, Right. We only use this one. We run it uh, locally from the command line. We don't run it in a container. 
and create a file can cause buffer overflow and then freeze the content. Oh, this uh, stack error one. Describe your observation. Just remove this uh, dash f no stack protector. Uh, we can do it uh, from that make file. Uh, it's still running. Okay, let's have a look. CD to the server code. Uh, here, uh, stack L1 to just try L1 uh, here. Just try, try to stack L1. We need to remove that flag here, this flag. Okay, go to the server code. We only need to open that uh, make file. Drag job here. The L1, right, this one, and you can see those flags. There's a flags, there are two flags here. Let's just copy it. On the way, let's say flag uh, enable flag SE. Enable this. Uh, Stack protector, so enable SP, which means we remove this this one. Now, stack L one, we just copy this one. And just see paste here. Let's give it a name. Chorus. Say it uh, stack it one enable uh, stack protection. Now here the flag we change the flag to to this one to flag ESP. That's it. That flag uh, flag set to this is one. Compare a thirty-two bit. Oh, this is a stack L one ESP. You can choose any name. I just make it a uh, a little bit uh, readable. Now we can compare it. We use a uh, make that stack dash L one ESP. You see the command line is executed buffer size initial FP. You see that no that flag no stack protector is removed, which means now the stack protector is enabled. And the output is called stack L1 ESP. Okay, you see this one stack. L1 ESP. We need a, a data file, just copy that uh, bad file, copy it here and run it. Well, we can copy this one to that uh, folder contains the bad file, it's up to you. We know that a bad file is uh, inside the attack code. Right? Attack code, bad file, copy it here. Double check, you see the bad file is here. Now we can run this uh, stack L1 ESP. Supply this bad file. What do we see? It? Here it shows the address of the ESP and the buffer address, but now you see a stack smashing detected about it. This one is provided by that uh, stack protector. As we discussed in, in our lecture, so you can check the slides.
So the attack failed. Now turn on the non-executable stack protection to see the, what the protection looks like if it's attacked. This time we use uh, before we turn on this one we use this dash the exit stack which means makes the stacks uh, executable. Now to turn on the protection, we will make the stack non-executable. We will do this uh, in the shell code folder. The core shell code program puts a copy of the shell code on the stack. And then execute code from the stack. So we compile this core shell code.c without the dash z exit stack. Run them, describe, and explain your observation. Okay, let's have a check my previous stuff. Okay, it didn't have stopped. So, I made a mistake, right? For, for that one. For this one. What a mistake. I didn't uh, run my local server. Okay, now let's uh, kind of see to stop it. Oh, it's still trying. My bad. I stopped this one. All the servers are uh, stopped. So I need to. Uh, bring them up again then oops and stop this attack here is bring up before we uh, launch the attack we need to draw a local server right? open new tab we use inc dash l 9090 Okay, first make sure your container is running. Second, launch your server listening on this port number 9090. Then launch the brute force attack. Okay, now it's uh, going on. I would like to move here. Okay, task uh, seven dot b. Go to the share code, the core share. CD to the share code. Right, we have our core share code dot c. So we are asked to um, modify this one. Again, we just modify this. Com completion uh, flex so we what about this make file let's close the, the other make file so we will not mess them up this time we want the uh, the make up for the make file from this uh, shell code right here Okay, this time we are asked to uh, remove this one, so we can uh, copy this stuff. Okay, we just remove it. Remove these two flags and control S, save it. Then we compile it. Make sure you are inside the shell code folder. Tap make. You see it generates this a 2 dot out, a 64 dot out. Now we can call this uh, 
we have this tool. What's next? The run them and describe your observation. Hey, search tool dot out. Run it. What do we get? We get segmentation fault. Secret four dot out. Segmentation fault. Okay, that's it. But uh, it's not uh, as that readable, right? The information is not that helpful. It didn't say the exit is not executable and just kind of thing. It just show a segmentation fault. Okay, we complete uh, task seven. There are two subtasks. Uh, please uh, pay attention, even though these uh, countermeasures can be used against the attacks we launched so far, but there are new attack techniques where even the return to lab C attack can be used to defeat these countermeasures. If you want to learn more, you just check the textbook. It's an extension of the attack uh, techniques we learned so far. Okay, we let's have a check on that brute force attack. See, it, I succeeded. I got a root share here. So in your lab report, you need to show you got a root share. And check this one. And you also you see your script stopped, blocked here. Once we got a root share. Oh, it's nothing sharp. Okay, it's sharp up here. Every time it received a connection, it will print out the two addresses. After you complete everything, uh, please run that DC down to cleanly shut down all these uh, servers, all these containers. So just run DC down from any, uh, not from any place. You still need from this. Uh, Lab set up. 